So video games, they can be fun, they can be amazing, but sometimes they can be so bad that they create mega, mega controversy. Some of them we know very well, Doom, Laser Suit Larry, Mortal Kombat, and many more games have pissed off concerned parents for years. But here's a list of controversial games that have had so many gamers completely ticked off because their parents took it away from them. So my name is Dave Wapo, and let's get into IO Game Time. Boom! First up on our list, we're going to talk about a company called Mystique. This company went out of business during the video game crash of 1983. But one of their first games from 1982, Beat 'em and Eat 'em, was making people go, what? It was a game where you controlled two girls that are on the ground floor underneath a building. And as those two girls, you go back and forth collecting the semen of a man that's masturbating in the building above you. The cool part is, is you get a life every 96 points. Quite suiting. You can rest assured that parents didn't want their kids playing this on Atari. But they didn't finish there. They released a game called Custer's Revenge. Now this is a game where you got to play General Custer as he's nakedly going from one side of the screen to the other. And he's even got an erection. Check that thing out. To beat this game, you had to go from one side of the screen to the other, dodging arrows to get to the naked tied up native woman that's on the other side. And then after that, you stick your penis inside her and you probably rape her. Now this game got in trouble so much that it had protests from Native American groups and women rights groups. And then on top of that it had a lawsuit for 11 million dollars. Jumping to 1987 we're talking about Leisure Suit Larry. When Sierra released this game they weren't sure of how well it was going to be received. So they had no publicity or advertising budget but the game is centered around you Leisure Suit Larry. who's a 38 year old loser who lives in his mom's basement and hasn't lost his virginity. And the game goes around four different girls that you can choose from. But if you chose the prostitute, well, you'd get an STD and you'd die immediately. But that's been a lot of sexual stuff. What about straight up violence? Let's lock and load to the 1993 gore fest. Doom. This game was the beginning of gory first person shooters. This game was so bad being filled with gore, guns, and satanic themes that it was blamed for the Columbine High School Massacre. That wasn't the only game that was blamed for real life events. Now as games progressed throughout the years, graphics got better and things became more realistic. Games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's No Russian is a perfect example of this. This particular particular mission made headlines and had people talking about it for months. Because in that level you walked around with a bunch of other terrorists shooting up civilians. And people were saying it was way too close to life. But GTA itself had tons of controversial moments. Grand Theft Auto 4 was blamed when six teenagers were arrested for a crime in New Hyde Park. On June 27, 2008, six teenagers mugged a man, kicked in his teeth, and stole his vehicle. When the teenagers were asked about it, they said it was the game that inspired them to do this. But things got so bad for GTA, back in 2007, Jack Thompson became the number one enemy for gamers. He campaigned against the game and its developers Rockstar with a lawsuit and even a counter lawsuit to ban this game completely. At the end of the lawsuit, Jack Thompson was barred from suing the game's parent company, Take Two. Jack Thompson, I'm sorry, but you lost that one. Another one for GTA, back in 2004, you may remember a mod called Hot Coffee. This was a mod that was released where you could play Carl C.J. Johnson and have intercourse with one of his many girlfriends. The term hot coffee was a euphemism for hot sex. Speaking of nudity, let's talk about another controversial patch. Patch of nudity. We're talking about the Nude Raider patch that was for 1996 Tomb Raider. Now everybody loved Laura Croft. She was hot right off the bat. But gamers were talking about how you could get this patch and play as Laura Croft completely nude throughout the game. Since since then, there have been many games that have tried to take the title. Games like Postal 2, where there's tons of stereotypes and a high level of violence that's pissed so many people off. It was a game where you played a postal worker and you had the opportunity to kill anybody, really. And through very gruesome deaths, like you could light people on fire with gasoline. Now, people related Postal 2 and Postal 1 to the going postal slang and incidents from 1986 to 1997, where postal workers went crazy and gunned down 40 people. And the game itself was even sued by the United States Postal Service. However, it was dismissed with prejudice back in 2003. We're 
talking controversy, we can't leave out games like Conker's Bad Fur Day. Now, what was controversial about this game? It was a parody and a comedy. But back in 2001, it was a game that looked to be designed for kids. You had very vibrant graphics and cute little cartoon characters. What made this game so shocking is when we found out these cute little creatures had gruesome deaths, very diverse vocabulary, naked flower boobies, sexual references, and a poo monster that just liked to sing. P.S. It's one of my favorite games. The multiplayer was awesome. By 2004, a Scottish company by the name of Traffic Games created JFK Reloaded. Now, what's controversial about that? You get to play the guy that shot JFK. That's right, you get to play as Lee Harvey Oswald in an attempt to recreate the path of the bullet for the assassination. A spokesperson for the JFK Institute said it was just disgusting. Now, a year later, in 2005, there was a game called Super Columbine Massacre RPG. And this is a game where you got to take control of the killers during the Columbine Massacre. That's Eric Harris and Dylan Calvo. But this game was so controversial, many people didn't even want to play it. PC World even said it was like number two of the worst games ever created. I don't think creator Daniel Ladone is really proud of this one. Moving on to something a little bit more recent. We are used to the Wii being a real kid-friendly sort of console. But when Mad World released in 2009, it made people go, what? Now, despite it having amazingly cool artistic graphics, it was really gory, and some people are saying it's the most violent game ever created. This game got so many bad reviews, it was even banned from places like Germany. But I think it was just shocking because, like I said, Wii is more aimed for kids. Now to our last one, it's a very recent game. It was actually released in 2015. We're talking about Playing History 2, Slave Trade. Now this is supposed to be an edutainment sort of game where you learn about the history of slave trading. The downside to this game is that there was a game mode called Slave Tetris. You have to literally fit slaves into a boat. Not good. Obviously a game like like this is extremely offensive to people. This game was so offensive that the developer had to pull the mode from the game itself. Despite the fact that the developer's intentions was to show how cruel and absurd slave trading was. So guys, that is our most top controversial games out there. And I know you guys know a few more out there, so please put them down there in the comments below. And I also wanna know, have you played any of the games that we have listed? But thanks for watching guys, my name is Dave Wapple. This has been IO Game Time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, Whoa!